It's night number five of the SISM World Military Women's Football Championship. We're here in Spokane, Washington at Union Stadium as we get ready for maybe the most anticipated matchup of the tournament as Germany, who looks to improve to nine points tonight with a win. Well, they'll have to knock off the host, the United States, who are trying to brush off their loss two nights ago to Cameroon and keep their gold medal chances alive. Hi, everybody. Hello to those of you in Germany who are waking up early to watch this match. Danke, thank you for joining us here in Washington. I'm Alex Gould. Alongside me is U.S. Air Force Staff Sergeant Shelby Pruitt-Johnson. And Shelby, great to be here with you for our final match of the night. We just saw Cameroon beat Ireland 12-0, the most goals in the tournament to tie Germany for the lead in Group A, but a German win could put them one win away from the gold medal match. As for the United States, trying to keep their gold medal match hopes alive and get revenge on Germany for their loss to them in Wuhan, China in 2019. So much history, so much respect between these two nations. You know, I think everybody's excited here today to watch this match, and we're about to get underway here with the SISM, SISM National Anthems. So here's the SISM march that unites the two nations, and then we'll get the national anthem for the United States, as well as the national anthem for Germany.
ahead and give a big round of applause for the local youth marching on with the teams today and our volunteers for holding up the flags. Standings not showing there on your screen, but the refs and the captains are going to flip here. They're going to flip the coin, but the standings up till now, Cameroon has six points in Group A. Germany also has six points, Shelby. They, if they can beat the United States here, they have the chance to improve to nine points and be one match away with that match, that title match to set up between them and Cameroon to go to the gold medal match. You know, I think... Everybody in the stands and the coaches and the players are really expecting a lot out of this game. Everyone is super excited. I think it's going to be a very well even, fair, exciting, fun game for both these two nations. And they have a good relationship with each other, so this is going to be a great time, a fun time, and really some great football here out in the field that we're going to see today. And this is a big coin toss right here. I mean, it really is. The sun that is setting and it won't set and go down until about 8:45 local time that would be about 5:45 in the morning in germany yesterday we saw the united states or i guess two days ago we saw the united states goalkeeper lose a ball in the sun we also saw south korea's keeper lose a ball in the sun yesterday that cost them a goal against mali that gave mali their first goal ever of the Women's World Military Football Championship. And so this flip is big because if you get to play offensive, you get to attack to that side of the pitch, you have an advantage because then when the keeper in the second half has to play there, the sun starts to go down ever so slightly. And we've seen it all day today, all day, every day. The sun is a problem no matter what. Even in the morning where there's still, it's not, it's as higher in the sky, that sun is dangerous for the goalie over here on the right side of the field. They're wearing visors, they're wearing hats, they're doing what they can to prevent that. But like we said before, you can't really train against the sun, right? You cannot prepare for the sun to be in your eyes like that. So you really just have to depend on your defensive line to make sure the ball doesn't get past that so that way you don't have to make, have the chance to make a mistake back there as the goalkeeper. And it looks like the U.S. is defending that side. So the goalie here, Haidink, will be in the sun and the sun will be in her eyes for the first match. And that's Jen Hedink, who is going to be in between the pipes, not Kelly Fitzgerald. So USA and Derek Way and their head coach making a keeper change. But it is about 89 degrees, 88 degrees, we'll say, 31.1 degrees Celsius. So it's still hot here in Spokane. Referees today... You have the head referee is Min Jin Cha from South Korea. Yo An Tita, the AR1, is from France. Son Young is the AR2, also from South Korea. And then Alexandra Kola is the fourth official. This was the exact officiating we saw when the U.S. took on Cameroon two nights ago. So you know Cameroon is watching. And Cameroon, realistically, Shelby, they would love to see the United States knock off Germany here. That would be a good result for Cameroon. Either way, they improved to six points, and we are underway as Katie Gernsbacher gives way to a teammate in Aaron Spear. You know, speaking of Cameroon, I was almost expecting them to stay here a little bit later after their game today and scout out these two teams because they just might be one of the teams that they're facing in the championship if they get there match so they're not here they're getting some rest after that long game that they just played but we'll see them out here later in the tournament lineups for today starting 11 for the united states the keeper is jen hedink who we were talking about left back is scotty colton left center back is jen gillette right center back simone gardner meredith reisinger who's passing it back here to jen hedink is the right back 
Holding midfielder is Aaron Spear. Center mid, Katie Gernsbacher, another central midfielder. And the captain tonight for the United States is Angela Caramanos. Left wing is Kaylee Utley. Center forward is Haley Robertson. And the right wing is Morgan Roberts. The U.S. lineup in a 4-3-3. Here is Haley Robertson has four goals in the tournament that leads all scores had a hat trick against belgium in the very first match of the tournament u.s won in convincing fashion over belgium 10 nil this will be a united states corner here not even 90 seconds into the match this is about the time we saw Haley Robertson and the U.S. strike against Belgium in that very first match on Monday. They will play it short. This is the cheetah, they call her. Morgan Roberts. Morgan Roberts, right foot try and a save. How about that from Gina Marie Michka? Otherwise, the United States would have been up 1-0 in the second minute. Absolutely. What a great save and nice reach. And it almost looked like it was going to go in from this angle, but it did not. I promise to get to Germany's starting 11 after this attack for the United States. Kaylee Utley lofted inside the 18. Finds the feet of Scotty Colton who tries to stick with it. Good ball here out wide. The United States have to be wary of the counterattack for Germany. This will go past the touchline. Now we can get to Germany's starting 11 in a 4-2-4 formation. You saw Gina Marie Michka already make her presence felt in between the pipes. A terrific save by her. The left back is Yasmin Hamel. The left center back is Vanessa Honig. The right center back is Zara Meinertz. The right back is Sabrina Brunschweig. And then the left midfielder is Jill Ludwig. Right midfielder, Vanessa Scrade. Then the left wing is Alexandra De Lucia. The central forward is Jessica Schlegel. And then kind of a forward, the way they're playing this is right behind Schlegel is Zonia Batoshek. We've seen her score a handful of goals in this tournament, three to be exact. And then to round out the starting 11 for Germany, the right wing is Annika Michel. Reisinger plays it back to Gillette. And Gillette wants to give Jen Hedink a boot down the pitch. But so much history between these two nations, Shelby. Talked about it, so much respect. How about that ball by the captain and Karamanos? Morgan Roberts on the far flank, working 1v1. Got to cross one into the box. Chance for the United States. It is stopped by Michka. Like you were saying, a lot of history between these two teams, right? Competitively and with the friendship as well. We talked to the coaching staff here of the Germany team, and they, they said, hey, we've had a great with the U.S. team. We've always had a great relationship with them. We're excited to play them. Although we're obviously both trying to win here, we're excited for a fair game and a good match. And that is the first whistle you will hear. That is going to be a foul against Aaron Spear. So it will be a free kick here for Germany and Sabrina Bonsweig. So Kelly Fitzgerald not making the start in between the pipes, but a cool story. Sabrina Bonsweig and Kelly Fitzgerald both play on the same team in Germany. They both play for SC Siegelbach. They got third in the league together. And Brunschweig has been on the team since 2013. But at the pep rally, they hosted a pep rally at the Fairchild Air Force Base here in Spokane. That's where all the nations are staying. And they had a pep rally for the United States. And a bunch of players were asked. So was the head coach, Derek Wayan, as well as the assistant coach, Marcy Walton. They said... Who are you looking forward to matching up against the most? And without hesitation, the entire coaching staff, the entire team said Germany. The U.S., of course, so much respect between these two, but they have a bad taste in their mouths. In 2019 in Wuhan, China, in the 89th minute, Germany scored to break a nil-nil tie, and Germany wound up winning 1-0 against the U.S. in group stage. 
And what a treat that you, me, the city of Spokane, the citizens in front of us, Team Fairchild, all get to watch it go down here at Union Stadium and watch the teams play, respect each other, and have that competitiveness and try to make it in the goal to get to the next round here at the 13th World Military Women's Football Championship. Reisinger into the 18, had a Caramanos. Robertson is in there. Here's Aaron Spear. Spear tried to make a move, instead turned it over. Could be a counter here for Schlegel. Schlegel had two in the last match that they won against Belgium, 5-0. So Jessica Schlegel, who came off the bench in the second half against Belgium, she got the start today. And we were curious to see if she would. And of course, she was rewarded with the start today, and it was ever so deserving. You know, and I think both teams kind of made a little bit of a shift with their players, right? We talked about how Kelly Fitzgerald is not in the goal today. And you wonder if that's part of the strategy for today's game, right? We talked to the coaching staff for the Germany team, and they said, hey, we know the top three players, the strikers and the forwards of the USA team, is one to beat. But we have a plan, they said. And I'm excited to see what that plan is here today. Reisinger trying to box out, and she does beautifully that time. So... Alexandra De Lucia could not get to the ball. So it'll be a goal kick here for Hedink. But the head coach, the manager for this German military team is Kirsten Stegemann. Head coach and a player since 2006. She was in the Military World Cup as a player in 2007 and 2011. And we asked her before the match, we said, is it weird? Is it unique? Is it different not getting the chance to lace up the boots and play against the United States here? And she said, absolutely. She said, every time I see an attacking opportunity, I want to go out there and score a goal. But she said she is so proud of these women as Utley slips through the defense. Could be a one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Kaylee Utley misses wide. Did you hear that crowd? We were all looking for a goal there and everyone in unison said, oh, it missed it just by a little bit. Not quite a sold out crowd here at Union Stadium that seats 4,500, but boy, they were getting ready to celebrate here and Spokane, take a look again. Didn't quite have the angle there, Shelby. Tried to finish on the back post there and couldn't get it to go. So Kaylee Utley, St. Louis, Missouri native, a captain in the Army, who scored in the fifth and 48th minute against Belgium, was looking for her third tally of the tournament. Scotty Colton gets shoved from behind there. So that's a foul against Michelle. Colton, who set up the lone goal for the United States. They trailed 1-0 after that ball got in the sun. Fitzgerald couldn't make the save. But then Scotty Colton found the head of Haley Robertson inside the 18. Robertson does what she does best. Finished into the back of the net to knock things up 1-1 one one going into the halftime. But then in the 79th minute, a goal by Cameroon's Tabe, the central forward. And that was it. Cameroon wound up beating the United States 2-1. to one. Reisinger. So Simone Gardner gets the start today. Did not draw the start against Cameroon. Instead, it was Tori Allen in her place, but she's back in the starting 11 here today. Flag went up, offside. As the AR1 and Son Young. Turnover here. Haley Robertson looking for space. Robertson has Utley. Utley another chance and a goal for the United States. 
Kaylee Utley gets redemption thanks to the turnover by the back line of Germany. It went Robertson to her right to Utley and the United States in the 11th minute lead 1-0. What a precision pass. We've been talking about it the entire tournament. Over there to the corner, not booting the ball, not trying to kick it as hard as you can, but just a precise pass right there in the corner. What a great shot by Utley. And this time, the St. Louis, Missouri native and Kaylee Utley had a much better angle set up beautifully by Haley Robertson. And that is exactly what the fans wanted to see here in Spokane. A 1-0 lead. Had to play from behind against Cameroon last match. They get out to a 1-0 advantage. Now Utley wants to try and set up Robertson. The keeper is out. What a stop, though, by Gina Marie Michka. And what was interesting about that play there is Vanessa Honig crashed in to Gina Marie Michka, which actually wound up making her fall on the ball in that situation, Shelby. A we weird sequence and a weird play there for Germany, but it worked out. I think it was a very nice snag there by Mitchka. Good slide tackle on the far side of the pitch. That was DeLucia. The left wing for Germany. Now that the U.S. is up one, I, I hope this kind of gives them a little bit of motivation and they carry on that motivation to keep going and to make those plays up there to Roberts, Rutten Robertson and Utley and get another one in the back of the net. Maybe some space here. Utley trying to stay on side, but maybe the best right back. At least that's what Derek Way and the head coach for the United States called Sabrina Braunschweig. Said she is the best right back in this tournament. She's looking like right forward there for a little bit. Having the confidence to move forward and trust in your defensive line to shift and cover your back is really a lot of skill there for Braunschweig. So a goal kick here for Hedink. So the very first match of the tournament as well as opening ceremonies here in Spokane and over at Fairchild Air Force Base, U.S. Soccer Vice President Bill Taylor got the chance to take in that opening ceremonies as well as the first match against Belgium. Boy, what a match he saw. A 10-0 victory for the United States. They got seven goals in the first half, added three in the second but Bill Taylor got a chance to take pictures with the team and talk to the team and also talk about how the women's side of the sport is growing rapidly in the United States. He was very proud of these women. Bill is always off doing something. Is That could have been dangerous there from Gillette, who just got a touch on the ball to Gardner, and they play it out wide on the far flank to Reisinger. But also, too, how about the special message from Kelly O'Hara, one of the defenders, one of the backs, for the U.S. national team sent in a message. Kelly's brother serves, and she sent in a message to the team that she was going to cheer them on and tune in. And so the United States have had a great experience with Bill Taylor, Kelly O'Hara, and, of course, the rest of these fans cheering them on in Spokane. And, you know, it's, it seems almost like a... It's a pattern, right? There's a lot of people in this tournament who are recognizing the hard work that these women do every day and that they have done to get here in this tournament. Um, we had the Malaysian former pro football player. He visited the Mali team here. The attache, they visited as well. They have, like you said, Kelly O'Hara sending out shout outs. Bill, Mr. Bill Taylor, him being here. Just a ton of different people really caring about the things that these women do and inspiring them to keep doing more. And for Germany, head coach Kirsten Stegman was telling us before the match that Germany and manager Stegemann are in contact with Mala Frams, who's a keeper for the German national team. And Mala Frams has been tuning in, and I know 
Germany has been tuning in to the European Championships for football that is going on in Europe right now. Team Germany is off to a 2-0 and start in the rankings and the standings, much like the German military team here in Spokane. And as they were telling us about that... Got to be careful of Robertson here. Back line is struggling with number 31 for the United States. Morgan Roberts is out wide. Does Roberts have the angle? Takes a shot, and it gets past Michka. So it's going to be a United States corner on the far side. That went off of the left back and Yasmin Hamel. So we've seen Utley take the corner kicks here on the near side. And we've seen Katie Gernsbacher, center mid, take the corners on the far side for the United States. Head referee there in Minjin Cha talking to a couple of players to separate them. Gernsbacher high into the Spokane sky here trying to find the captain in Caramanos here Scotty Colton dangerous with the left foot was it deflected it was not it will be a goal kick for Michka but the crowd here enjoying that attack as well absolutely and the idea don't take too much time right there I have little time let me just get a rocket on it and she did just that next time let's make it on frame and see if we can get it in Here's Batoshek. Couldn't get it over to her teammate and Michelle. Utley and Robertson. Was Robertson on? No, she was not. The flag went up. That is Son Young. The assistant referees. But Kaylee Utley scored that first goal for the United States in the 11th minute if you're just joining us set up beautifully by Haley Robertson inside the 18 and those two play on the same Northwest Premier League team the Ollie Town Artisans you could see it on that goal so in sync with one another they could finish each other's sentences and now Utley trying to beat Braunschweig here does for now Braunschweig good closing speed Utley wants a second it's deflected by Braunschweig who's still on the ground Gernsbacher, now to Karamanos. The captain takes a chance. It's deflected by Scrada. And it will be a German throw-in. I'd have to say, that was a good play there, passing it back there to Karamanos and not trying to shove it in where everybody else is going. Let's bring it back for a little second, try to get an opportunity like this. Morgan Roberts gets thrown to the turf, but no foul called. And Morgan Roberts is arguing with Son Young over there, the assistant referee, saying that that should have been a foul. And there's a player down here for Germany. So that's Yasmin Hamel over there who's getting tended to by the training staff. But a good start here for the United States as Hamel gets up and that's good to see. But what the U.S. needs, Shelby, we alluded to it in the pregame, but what the U.S. needs is they need to beat Germany here and then they need Germany to beat Cameroon. Because then you'd have a three-way tie. Tiebreaker is goal differential. Which Cameroon did a nice job winning 12-0 earlier against Ireland. And Roberts is well off the mark there on the cross. So right now the United States is plus nine in the goal differential department. Good ball by Scotty Colton. Kaylee Utley trying to find Robertson. She was trying to return the favor, but it was too 
far away from Haley Robertson. Definitely a good look there. She was running in just a tad too late, I think, for that ball. But I think they're going to make the connections here in the next couple of minutes. So the United States plus nine, Germany's plus eight, but Germany, of course, with those six points. So the goal differential, as of right now, does not matter. And actually, if you count that goal by the United States, of course we do. They're plus ten currently. But Cameroon, through two matches, after their two wins over the United States and Ireland, Cameroon is plus thirteen. So if you missed that match, it was a big one for Cameroon. They needed to win, and boy... They won in convincing fashion. 12-0 over Ireland. Right out of the gates. Cameroon was on the attack. Did that the entire match. As the United States get a corner here, this is Kaylee Utley likely to take it. She'll play it short to Scotty Colton. Colton sets up Utley. Utley could take a shot or a cross. Instead, it's a cross. Trying to find the head. Robertson just over the goal. Hit the American football crossbar. That is out of play, of course. And it will be a goal kick for Mitchka. But we've seen it all match, right? We've seen in a lot of these games crashing the goal. Just And you can see right here, bunch of teams and U.S. players getting a touch on the ball, whether it be well or not. But just trying to get a foot on the ball to get it to where it needs to go is really what we need. Just crashing the goal and hopefully it'll deflect in at some point. So water break, mandatory hydration break to... Kind of take a break, step aside, talk some strategy, get a breather. Again, it's hot here in Spokane, but the United States with a 1-0 advantage. A good start here in the first half after that 11th minute goal by Kaylee Utley. You see everyone getting hydrated and situated there to talk about. I mean, the United States, I wouldn't say they've dominated the first half, but it's been pretty close, and they have that 1-0 advantage as we welcome you inside the broadcast booth, Alex Gould alongside U.S. Air Force Staff Sergeant Shelby Pruitt-Johnson. Really appreciate you guys joining us here today. Got John Anderson to my right. He's our statistician. He's doing a lot of the tough work. He's the most important person in the booth. But, wow, I mean, our crew has been terrific all tournament long. We could be nothing without them. And, of course, nothing without these women who defend their countries so well, but also defend the pitch pretty well, Shelby. You know what? I don't know if you saw there, but that sun is brutal. It's in my eyes, making my eyes water, and I can't imagine the goalie Hiddink here in the back who is just looking straight and staring into the sun. So she's pretty lucky that it hasn't gotten too much over there on her side. And you can see all the other players shading their eyes as well. It is brutal out here trying to see that ball. United States looking for a potential second here. They've been on the attack since the very first minute of this match. Morgan Roberts to throw it in. Booted away. That was Minerts. So we were talking about our crew, but every match have to shout out Hill Air Force Base in Salt Lake City, Utah, the second audiovisual squadron, as well as Joint Base San Antonio Lackland and San Antonio, Texas, the third audiovisual squadrons. Two squadrons in the Air Force that have come together to allow those of you in Germany, maybe those of you in the States, wherever you may be watching, to watch on Facebook or YouTube, as well as Twitter. Our crew has been working so hard, every different camera angle. It's been so much fun to go back and watch after these matches and see all the different angles and all the different shots that our team is getting. Absolutely, this team works so hard. And, you know, it's easy to film something that is so exciting as this is right here. All the camera angles help out the teams and they help out everyone see the match just like they would be seeing it here if they were here today. But we just wanted to provide the best possible product for everyone to see their friends and families play and to really show 
the world what these ladies can do. So Jen Hedink, who is making her first start, she's a first lieutenant in the Air Force from Wiley, Texas. She played at the Air Force Academy from 2014 to 2017. She has the most saves ever in a single season in program history. That was back in 2017, her senior season. She had 120 saves. Most ever Mountain West saves and Mountain West games as well in 2017 with 87. So that's good and bad because it means that she was tested a lot, but she didn't allow a lot of goals <laughs> into the back of the net. And as we get a foul here, it'll be a free kick for the United States. You know, that makes me wonder, is that why she's starting? Is the U.S. waiting for those shots on goal? And they, they really trust Hedink to save and make those saves here on the field today. But also, too, Derek Wayne was telling me that Hedink was battling an injury. So Hedink was battling an injury, and now she is good to go. Good ball. Kernsbacher trying to find the head of spear. Ping pong off the keeper. And it is stopped by Gina Marie Mishka. Boy, we got to take a look at this again. They were playing ping pong inside the 18, right outside the 6. That was the two center mids. And Spear, as well as Karamanos, I think, was into the mix. Let's see if we have a replay on this. Gernsbacher puts it in. It hit the head of Spear, and then actually I just think it caught the post and then went to the keeper and Michka. We've said it this entire time. Crashing the goal, getting a body on the... On, look at that. In front of the goal, making it to be on top of the goal and wait for that deflection, exactly what they're doing. So it did hit the side of the head of Karamanos and then hit the post and then went to Michka. Boy, what a break there for Germany. Karamanos almost got a goal just by being in the right place at, at the right time. It actually would have went as an assist for Aaron Spear. But Germany survives there by a couple of inches on that post. And then credit Michka for also being in the right spot to make sure she could corral it once it hit the post. And this just looks like a different United States team, Shelby, than we saw the other match against Cameroon. The spacing was a little bit off for the U.S. in that match, and they had problems, of course, as did Ireland today, with the quickness of that Cameroon squad. Slide tackle by Braunschweig. Braunschweig is not afraid of that ground. She one is of the best sliding. matchups. As that one was crossed in. Left foot by Utley. Good ball by Scotty Colton. Flag stays down. Utley is onside. Utley faked it. Now she'll go into the 18. Right foot of Morgan Roberts. Can she keep it in? She cannot. It will be a goal kick. Boy, that was a pretty ball there from Kaylee Utley. But Roberts couldn't control it with the right foot. that Alex but over there on the side Braunschweig and Utley they're shaking hands they are a good match that friendship there the relationship the respect they know that they're two great players and that might have been part of the reason why Germany put them right there absolutely I think that's a matchup that everyone was anticipating coming in to this match Nice job there by Reisinger. Finds Gernsbacher. Utley trying to return the favor. Robertson was onside. And a foul is going to be called against Haley Robertson. I think it's just a matter of time until Robertson gets the touch on the ball that she needs. They're sending it right to her, right in front of her, making those runs. And like I said, just a matter of time before it gets it in. So Gina Marie Mishkin, Mishka, excuse me, played in the youth Bundesliga league, and now plays for FC Stern Muchen, and got fourth in the league this past year. 
She's been on this team, this German women's football team, since 2020. All out wide here for Germany. Trying to find the equalizer here in the 32nd minute. Michelle and Colton. We talked about Braunschweig and Utley. This is a good matchup to look at as well. It will be a goal kick for Hedink. You know, something interesting about Scotty Colton, she got to play against Alex Morgan when she played for the Seattle Sounders. Isn't that interesting, getting to play against a player like that and then now coming here to show her skills here in the in Spokane, Washington. And we talked about it against Cameroon. Scotty Colton's second most assists ever still to this day in school history with 21 for Louisiana Tech. It's Braunschweig tried to find Batoshek. That's a connection. Utley wanted it. Braunschweig was well off the mark, and they're still going to go to Utley here, but Braunschweig controlled it for a second and now Kaylee Utley has some space working one-on-one -on -one. great 1v1 stop there by Meinerts who really helped out Braunschweig there who was pretty gassed from the previous play absolutely and we talked about it a little bit before she moves up and her defensive team moves to the, her side covers her back and that's just trust that's trust cohesion skill practice and it really, really worked out for that play right there. We were talking about Scotty Colton as she's defending Michelle here. 1v1, Michelle, such good wheels. Colton got a foot on the ball. That's why we were talking about her. Gets it to Utley. Ali Town Artesians, the dynamic duo. How about that stop on the ball? Magnificent footwork from Robertson, but then couldn't get it to Utley. But going back and finishing that point on Colton, you talked about the Colorado Rapids, but second most assists ever at Louisiana Tech. She was the all-time assist leader until her record was broken in 2019. So her record was broken by Jalen Peoples, who now has the all-time assist record. She beat her by one, Sheldon. So Peoples has it at 22 for Louisiana Tech. Terrific women's soccer program. Good pressure there by Colton. Germany's also going to need their left mid. Right now kind of playing in a right mid spot where she's at, but trying to get back to her position is Jill Ludwig. They're going to need Ludwig if they want to win this match. She's been a key player Ludwig has in the middle, intercepting those passes and balls from the U.S. and trying to make plays for the German team on their attacking third. Yeah, she plays for Fort Spoho, which is Team 98. Good ball into the box, and Hedink is going to get it. That player who was on the ground is Jessica Schlegel, who's looking over at the referee and wanted... A foul to be called. Thought she got pushed from behind. It looks like Scotty is down. Hey, you want to talk about the respect. These two right here, this is this is a good shot. You hope that Scotty Colton's okay. An absolute warrior is Colton, but those are two of the best defenders, the best backs in this tournament. Scotty Colton and Sabrina Braunschweig. And an immediate, Braunschweig was immediately trying to help Scotty up. Like, that's the relationship I'm talking about. We know that these two teams are trying hard to beat one another, but they will never step over that line of respect between the two teams. And that's really what it's about here is friendship through sport. And I think that's really happened here with the two teams. Um, not many times would you see the two nations really hanging out, getting to know each other without something kind of like this and knowing the language of football together speaking that same language and then getting to be friends and hanging out and relaxing with each other is really really nice to see here and you know our, the coach was telling us a little bit about the El Paso game in 2018 that even after they both got kicked out of the group play they got outrun there 
they set up a friendly match and they played a scrimmage against themselves ended up tying of course you know these two great teams they ended up tying four to four in their friendly match but then guess what they did afterwards right they hung out the two teams went hung out and they got to really have some camaraderie between the two teams just on their own and i think that's just really one of the best parts about the SISM program 100 percent indeed and that coach was marcus who let us know for germany one of their assistant team manager he's been so amazing and getting us all this information but a big announcement was just made scotty colton is out of the game she's out of the match so no more scotty colton she was deemed not okay not good enough to go back in so that's a big loss for the united states scotty colton one of the best backs in the tournament is off the pitch erica jarmer Captain in the Army from McMinnville, Oregon, who played a couple of seasons at Cornell on the back line. Of course, Ivy League, now a dietitian in the Army. How smart and studious Jarmer is. She's going to get a pretty healthy assignment here against a tough German attack. Boy, we hope that Scotty Colton's okay because losing her for the rest of the match is, is really tough. Exactly, and you know, the German team definitely recognize that and they might start using that vulnerability here on the right side to make the plays yeah, that's a good point we'll see if they want to test jarmer now that colton is out of the match Space here for Aaron Spear. Utley's calling for it. Instead, it's going to go to Robertson, who was also calling for it. Those two always want the ball at their feet. The absolute hustle by Utley trying to get those balls running, making those runs, making those passes, and making things happen for her teammates is phenomenal. I don't know how she's not tired yet. Charmer, who just checked in. Back heel there by Utley and Braunschweig. Instead of clearing it, clears it down the pitch. Try and get it out of there. Now there could be a counter here for Germany. Turn it on the Jets here. For Germany in the middle of the pitch was DeLucia. How good is Utley? Immediate yeah. pressure there from Ludwig, too. Closing out her defender in Ludwig. Good deflection by Gernsbacher. Could set up a cross here on the near side. Instead, going to go short to Utley. That pass wasn't accurate enough. Utley would have had some space there, Shelby. Boy, Gernsbacher's going to want that pass back. Utley had some space to work with, but because the pass was off the mark, it allowed the German back line to get back on defense and stop Butley from doing anything. It really, once you're in the attacking third, you really have to be precise with the passes because the defensive line is has so much pressure and they can intercept that ball in a step or two. So really being precise like this chance here for morgan roberts has robertson instead could have utley instead it's going to be a shot and saved by mishka boy i think roberts wants that back as well Haley robertson was wide open about 14 yards out and could have blistered one into the back of the net here's batoshek germany still looking for her to make her mark in this match Batoshek, who scored the first goal for Germany in the ninth minute against Ireland, also in the 49th minute. And she scored her third goal of the tournament in the 18th minute last match against their European counterparts in Belgium. Here's a goal kick for Hiddink and 
She's a C-17 pilot, so she flies the cargo, the big heavies, and she's doing her job here in the goal in the goal box when she does have the chance to get some testing. Not a good pass there by Gernsbacher. Now Gernsbacher, frustrated with herself, gets it back. What a warrior. And Gernsbacher plays it out wide to Robertson. Here's Robertson trying to make a move. Can Robertson stay with it? Good 1v1 defense by Vanessa Honig. Honig, an OR5 in the Army from Bielefeld, Germany. Now a chance, but that went past the touchline. Not going to count. The ball went past the touchline, so it is not going to count. And actually, it might have even been offside there on the United States. Young, or excuse me, Sun Young was right there, held up the flag. So that goal disallowed. Boy, I'll tell you, Germany has not had many chances. This back line has been stout for the U.S. What can Scrade do? She'll play it to the near side of the pitch for Braunschweig. Braunschweig has a woman out wide. This is Michelle. Michelle trying to do -si do with Jarmer, who just checked in, and then Gillette gets trampled over. Her ankle got caught. We have three women down inside the six. Boy, we already saw Scotty Colton go down, but this was dangerous inside the six. Gillette gets up. She's the first to get up. That's Batoshek as well. And the keeper in Hedink is still down for the U.S. Let's watch the replay there of this tumbling save. Boy, so Gillette cleared it. Hedink kind of crashed in to Batoshek. And then Jen Gillette on the back side of that got her ankle rolled up. But it's Hedink who is still down. Boy, the United States already lost their lethal lefty and left back in Scotty Colton. And now Hedink, who was already battling an injury... Couldn't play the first couple of matches. Kelly Fitzgerald starts to warm up on the sideline. It almost, and I hate to say it, kind of looked like it was towards the head there that she got hit. And she's getting up here. It looked like it was towards the head there that she got hit. And she's getting up here. And when a player gets injured, of course, a lot of times they let them go off the pitch. They come back on a minute later or so, if that, with a keeper. If they come off the pitch, you know, you can't play without a keeper. So Fitzgerald would have to sub in. That would be the second sub for the United States. And again, you can use five substitutes. And Hedink gets a good standing ovation here from this Spokane crowd. So she's good enough to go. It's booted away. So 45th minute here. We'll see how much is going to be added. Wait and see how much is going to be added. Three minutes is going to be added here. Maybe a chance here for Germany. Schlegel trying to slide through. Got tackled. And a penalty is called against the United States. A yellow card against Gernsbacher, who can't believe it. And Schlegel forces the penalty. Boy, the United States was about three minutes or so away from taking this 1-0 lead into the half. 
a big call there by Min Jin Cha, the head referee from South Korea. So now it's going to be a battle between two. Jill Ludwig staring into the eyes, into the heart, into the soul of Hedink. And Hedink staring into the sun. Ludwig capitalizes on the penalty and Germany ties it up at one. They are fired up on the German sideline and boy the United States was three minutes away from taking that 1-0 advantage into the break. Instead a penalty and who else but Schlegel into the mix. Kirsten Stegeman trusting her to start this match after she scored and tallied two into the back of the net against Belgium. She forces the penalty, and her teammate, Jill Ludwig, capitalizes on the Schlegel penalty. So, Gernsbacher got the yellow card. Now she's playing with the yellow, so that was disastrous for the United States. And the first yellow for the United States, I believe, too. Morgan Roberts trying to answer right away. Kernsbacher, you know, she wants revenge, but Michka there to corral it. So about 40 seconds or so. And the United States build one last effort, one last attack here in this first half. Good ball by Gernsbacher. Here's the cheetah and Morgan Roberts. You see her speed. She gets taken down to the box, but no call. So we got a call on the other side of the pitch inside the 18. Morgan Roberts goes down just outside the six. And no call. Boy, it's been a busy first half for the head referee and Minji Cha. Take a look at this again. That was really close there, Shelby. Again, it's tough to see from that angle. Where was that right arm of Vanessa Honig? That was the question. And that is going to take us to the half. So the United States, who dominated the first half against Germany but in additional time Jessica Schlegel makes her presence felt slipped through two defenders got taken down inside the box and Jill Ludwig cleaned home the penalty and just like that maybe a disappointing first half for the United States just because of the way it ended I think so too but in another in another way one-to-one -one. They're back at a blank slate, right? No one has the advantage. No one has the disadvantage. These two teams are going to come out in the second half even and ready to fight for that next goal to get above the other team. Cast booth, but while we're away, our friends at the Fairchild Air Force Base Public Affairs Shop have a few videos for you. See you on the other side of halftime.
was the first strike by Kaylee Utley and the first goal for the United States. The U.S. shall be dominated the first half, but because of a penalty in added time, Jessica Schlegel went down inside the 18. The penalty was awarded by the head referee in Mingji Cha, and that allowed Germany and Jill Ludwig, who capitalized on the penalty kick, to tie things up at one. So I think we can look at two different things. The United States dominated, so that was a good thing for the U.S. And this heavy United States crowd here in Spokane, almost a sold-out crowd here at Union Stadium. But for Germany, they were fired up about that goal because they knew that they were getting beat in that first half. Absolutely. Both teams, one point, they're tied up, right? So I think they're both coming out now to be like, all right, we're starting over. This is what this is where we play. Germany's gonna say this is how we're gonna play. You know, maybe we let you have it in the first half, but I don't think that that's gonna happen this half. I think they're both gonna come out really hard and try to get that next goal to get that one up on the other team here very early in the second half. So Germany made a sub. Zara Meinert is out for Germany. The player coming on to the pitch is Sophie Hagedorn. So Sophie Hagedorn, an OR3 in the Army for Germany checks in. And we are underway here in the second half. Curious to see if Germany plays a little bit more inspired after they got that penalty kick into the back of the net by Ludwig. Because they looked a little slow at times just in terms of keeping up with some of the forwards for the United States. That's why this German team is dangerous, just because the United States control possession about 65-35. Germany waited for that one opportunity and they got it in additional time. That's going to be a corner kick. Skrata was trying to claim it went off of Robertson's right foot instead. The corner is awarded, so this will be Gernsbacher who will take the corner for the US. And like we've been talking about in the game, now Michka has the sun in her eyes on this corner kick, and let's see if she can block it from getting in. Good point, Gernsbacher into the sun, into the night sky here in Spokane, and it's going to be a foul on Gillette as well as Karamanos. Both of them hit the deck, and Michka is still down for Germany inside the six. And she's back up and ready to play. A very talented keeper is Mishka. Talked about her accolades earlier. Gernsbacher couldn't get the right foot on it. Here's Skrata. Trying to find Batoshek. Batoshek off the head. Simone Gardner. It's a throw in here on the near side. Here's Batoshek, has three goals in the tournament. Gillette to Reisinger, Reisinger clears. There's a foul. That's going to go against Ludwig. So Spokane has been saying for a decade at least now, Shelby, that they want a soccer team here. They want a football team here. They want to see soccer come to life. They want to showcase that they are a fan base who is ready for the sport of soccer. And guess what? A USL team. So it's one step below MLS. It's going to be a men's team. One step below MLS, USL team is coming in 2023. So they are one year away from getting a USL team. I know everybody here in Spokane is really excited about that. Well, I think you can kind of tell here the crowd has been getting bigger and bigger every game. And you can tell the Spokane community is really, really big fans of the football soccer league.
Can Reisinger keep it in? She cannot, so it'll be a throw in here for the Germans. Even at halftime, you saw all the kids out there. There was a ton of little kids out there doing little scrimmages out there on the field, and it just shows the love that they have for soccer here in the Spokane community, and what an inspiration for all of them to be here watching these ladies play the game out here today. Absolutely, and there's a lot of men and women who are inspired by the way that these women serve their countries, but also the way they compete out on the pitch. This would be a U.S. throw-in. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day. We said it in the Cameroon versus Ireland match. These women are here to shake, showcase what they can do and showcase how much they love this sport. First and foremost, before anything, trying to have fun and enjoy it. And then, of course, trying to compete and win that gold medal. It's a big deal here in the 13th Sism Women's Football Championship. Gernsbacher may take one here. Sky's won. And it is over everything. Field goal was good. So if you're <laughs> playing American football here, that field goal would have been good from about 37 yards. I mean, Gernsbacher took that from the 20-yard line. He had 17 but did not connect it into the back of the net, which is what she was aiming for. You know, and we know these ladies are working so hard, practicing, scouting, learning, sharpening their skills to come out here and play. But this is fun, right? This is something they like to do, and you can tell out here by the passion on the field. Good ball by Braunschweig there on the far flank. On the attacking half now. And defensive third now for the United States. And you'd have to think about it. All these ladies are in the military, right? So they might not have the chance and the time to be playing their soccer game. And for this week, two weeks, that's all they get to do here. They get to be let go from the, the military just for a little bit. You know, some of them are still on their computers doing their job. But they get to have fun. They get to have this fun time really connecting with people from other nations, with the community, and being ambassadors for their nations. And you can tell all of them are really soaking all that up. Here's Michelle. Crosses one in off the head of Gillette. Schlegel, who forced the penalty. Ludwig, who scored the penalty. Nobody there in the middle of the pitch. Here's Kaylee Utley. See how she stops with the ball, turns and realizes she has space. Kaylee Utley is a veteran. Morgan Roberts. Is she gonna force the corner? She will. Witty play there by Morgan Roberts. Her and Hummel battled. And Roberts gets the corner for the United States. So here's Gernsbacher to take another one. Can the U.S. go back on top? Gernsbacher trying to set up the second for the United States. I believe that was off the head of a German defender. It was, so Gernsbacher is going to do it again. There's four inside the six here for the United States. Three just outside the box. Gernsbacher a low liner that time. Nobody was there, except for a German defender. Reisinger trying to put it back towards that corner flag. Now Morgan Roberts crosses. Good stop again. It won't be a corner here for Gernsbacher, but she'll get a throw in. She'll give way to Morgan Roberts. You know, something I'm noticing, the U.S. calls Roberts the cheater, right? She's got that speed. But you can kind of tell here, the Germany defense is kind of stifling that. She's kind of used to pushing off to the side and racing to the ball, winning that foot race. But it's almost like the defense over there is putting a stop to that. Yeah, Vanessa Honig has done a good job on her. Crossed into the box. Yet again, here is Roberts. And no one there for the United States, so a goal kick. So after 
three corner kicks there for the U.S. Nothing showing on the scoreboard. But Marcus was telling us, one of the assistant coaches, managers for Germany, he was telling us about a couple of shout-outs that he wanted to make. And he wanted to shout out a couple of different Sarahs, Francie, Selena, and Anna, for what they've done for the German team. So he wanted to shout out those five names and say hello and say thank you. As Braunschweig, so dangerous. A back on a back. This is the right back working on one of the center backs in Gillette. Braunschweig looking for help. Still looking. She'll find Schlegel. Schlegel. Michelle. Michelle back to Schlegel. So good at the give and go. Batoshek, does she have space? Takes a tumble inside the six. No whistle. And a good defensive stand for the U.S. Absolutely a great box out there by Gardner. Ooh, that was dangerous there for Germany. Reisinger was trying to get Utley on the run. Utley so good at timing those runs. It was a good defensive play. And now Haley Robertson has some space. Slide tackle, jumps over the slide tackle of Hagedorn. Robertson has Roberts on the backside. Did she get enough? No, she didn't. Robertson not enough on the left foot, and Brunschweig is down over on the far side, just outside the center circle. Now the training staff gonna check on their ever so talented right back. Definitely not a good player to see on the ground there. She has been vital in the defensive line for Germany. Braunschweig gets a good ovation here. Now we talk about the respect amongst these nations, but also, too, I know this is a very pro-U.S. crowd. Of course, they're rooting for the United States. They want to see the United States win the gold, as they should. But also, too, so much respect, A, for the way that Germany has carried themselves throughout the tournament and has carried themselves since the system started in 2002. Some of the most respectful, kind-hearted, and amazing people you get to meet from this German military team but also too there's that respect of defending your country right and so I think a lot of that but also too there's that respect of defending your country right and so I think a lot of that with people watching even in the United States rooting for the United States there just is that understanding that this is bigger than the match going on in front of us absolutely and even another part of that too is when people see a team playing aggressive, maybe a little bit physical, it's almost like an assumption that they're not very nice, they're mean people, right? Sometimes you kind of get that talk, but that's not Germany. Germany is physical and they're aggressive, but they are very respectful. And you can see them helping up the U.S. players, clapping hands, touching each other, lifting each other up, and that's exactly what it is. It's bigger than just this game here. It's about that friendship through sport and the two nations coming together and just having fun together. Had to be careful of Morgan Roberts here. She was threatening the keeper in Michka. You can see they're trying to test Gardner over there. Of course, I said Gardner, I meant Jarmer. They're trying to test Jarmer over there on the far flank. That's where Scotty Colton's position. Jarmer came in as the left back. Kate Utley just has no fear in her. She'll take on the entire German roster if she has to. And Morgan Roberts will as well. And boots one off of the German defender in Hagedorn, so this will be a corner kick on the far side. 
This has been the story. Utley takes the corners on the far side. Gernsbacher takes them on the near side. Utley trying to set up a U.S. goal to go back up on top. It's the head of Spear. Roberts tried to put it back in. Robertson, I believe, was onside, but didn't make a run right away. I think partly because she lost the ball in the sun. I think she ever saw that. Yeah, couldn't track that ball or didn't see it go up. Exactly. Scrade didn't know where that one went. That stayed on the ground. Another thing that we haven't really mentioned, on turf compared to grass fields, the ball moves a lot faster. So these teams, if they used to play on grass fields, aren't used to how fast and how quickly these balls and passes are going on when they're on the ground. And definitely way, so, way more used to it in the United States than they are in Germany. Good poke on the ball. Good touch there by Reisinger. But then not a good pass. Not great touch there from Grunsbacher, who had Utley. If that would have gotten over the head of Hagedor, and Utley would have had a one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and Mishka. Good anticipation, even though it's going to be a U.S. throw-in by Hummel. Talking about Hamel, plays for TSV Berga. She's got fifth in the league. She's been on this German team since 2010. She was on the team in 2011 when Germany got Gutley. Makes a move, and there is Hagedorn. Now a chance here for Utley again, who steals it right back. Kernsbacher leaves it for Karamanos, and bodying up beautifully is the keeper in Mishka. But a delighted U.S. crowd, even though it didn't get into the back of the net. Boy, Kaylee Utley working so hard on the far side. Really a lot of situational awareness right there just to leave it. Know that you don't have the best touch on it, but someone else might. And leaving it there for the other player was perfect. I mean, what, what more can we say about Kaylee Utley? I feel like we've brought up every fact about her days in West Virginia, Raleigh Town Artesians as well. I mean, she has looked like her days at West Virginia. I know she's going to tell you, yeah, I've lost a couple of steps, but boy, she is as explosive and dangerous as anyone in this tournament. Sub checking in for Germany. Coming in for Germany is number three. So uh, number three is Tessa Glickner, an officer one in the army, originally from Munich. Good ball here, Batoshek on Gardner. Batoshek pings it off the left leg of Gardner. It will be a corner kick here for Germany. Coming off the pitch for Germany is number 15, Monica Michel. So Michel's night is done. Want some fresh legs in Glickner. So this corner by Vanessa Scrotti, right in front of Aaron Curry, talented camera woman. It's about to turn 19. Scrotti. Batoshek. Can the U.S. clear it? They can for now. Utley on Ludwig, and it's a throw in for the United States. kick here for Hidink. 64th minute and as a reminder maybe you know this already maybe you don't we will not go to overtime there will be no extra time 
There will be no penalties. If the match ends in a draw, it ends in a draw. It will be a tie. So that's how it is in group stage. Of course, bronze medal match, gold medal match. All that fun stuff coming up next Friday. Of course, we will go to extra time. And then if it's not decided after extra time, we'll go to PKs. Kernsbacher turns. Roy Roberts left it for Reisinger, and it was a good decision. Witty there from Morgan Roberts. Roberts looking for Gernsbacher. Indecisiveness. Gernsbacher over the keeper. Could this be the second? And it is. Katie Gernsbacher chips one over the keeper in Mitchka to herself and then cleans it home for the United States. One of the most cheeky and witty goals we have seen in this tournament, Shelby. And the United States have their lead in the 65th minute. We talked about the cohesion, the, the skill, the technique of this U.S. team. And that just shows it right there. Leaving it for another player to have that score. Amazing. Let's check out the replay of that goal. Take a look at this again. Watch this. Indecisiveness. Mitchka kind of stuttered. Gernsbacher chipped it over her, and Gernsbacher put it into the back of the net. And those kids back there being inspired by Katie Gernsbacher. That was a great shot by our crew right there. Very pleased is this pro United States crowd, and Germany wants to answer right away. They want to level the match at two. Inside the 18, pinged around. Good stop. Who else but the goal scorer and Katie Gernsbacher. Tell you what, Katie Gernsbacher did not start last match. She didn't come on until the second half against Cameroon. And that was despite scoring two goals in the 75th and 79th minute against Belgium in that 10-0 defeat. Gernsbacher, a first lieutenant in the Marines. She is the only player on this U.S. team that is in the Marines. She's from Austin, Texas. Started her collegiate career at the University of Texas, where she played two seasons. That's Blanche Feig. It's off of Jarma. Jarma, who came in for Colton. Ludwig. Blanche Feig again. Wants to set up the equalizer. Looking for Batoshek taken down in the box. No call. Simone Gardner has had the assignment on Batoshek all night long, Shelby and she has stifled her to this point. Absolutely, what a good match we were talking about. The, the, just the defensive line of the U.S. and being able to kind of shut down that offensive line there for Germany, and they're doing a great job here in the center. There's Batoshek again, and also got to give a lot of credit to the entire back line, but also Jen Gillette. I mean, Gillette and Gardner have been hawking Batoshek all match long. Robertson tried to make a move. Good poke of the ball by Ludwig. Otherwise, it could have been a 2v3 for the U.S. But Gernsbacher, who started her career at the University of Texas before transferring to North Texas, played 25 matches for the Mean Green. She started 14 of 21 matches in 2016. She is a supply officer for the United States. Schlegel, left foot, good touch by Gardner. Batoshek could have been there inside the six on the back side of that play. That was definitely a dangerous play. I think that was some good moves there right there in the front of the goal box. Well, the difference, Katie Gernsbacher, 64th minute, chipped one over the keeper, but that chip was not going to be enough. She had to go get it, but she was all alone with the ball and had a wide open net. That is the difference in this match. And the United States, they need to win this match in order to get to that gold medal match. We were talking yesterday, the Marine Corps slogan is the few the proud and i'm going to tell you what 
Gernsbacher was sure proud of that goal right there. You saw her celebrating as soon as she scored it, and she worked hard to get that goal. Deflected. It will be a throw-in for the United States. And now Morgan Roberts is shaken up a little bit. U.S. wouldn't be mathematically eliminated yet with, a, well, no, they would be mathematically eliminated with a loss. With a draw, they wouldn't be mathematically eliminated, but it would be really tough. They need a lot to go right, and one of those things would be Belgium beating Cameroon, which not to say that it couldn't happen. We have seen so many different things in this sport occur, but Cameroon has looked like the better team so far through two matches as we get a hydration break here. So Germany and the United States resetting. This is similar to the last hydration break, Shelby, when the U.S. was up 1-0 in the first half. Germany talked over their strategy right around the 30th minute and then got a goal about 15 minutes later and added time to tie things up at 1. Well, we welcome you inside the broadcast booth. Now they're going to us here in a second. They're coming at some point here, Shelby. I know they are. There, there we, we are. are. <laughs> hey, guys. Alex Gould, U.S. Air Force Staff Sergeant Shelby Pruitt-Johnson. Appreciate you joining us. As we always say, I know these women appreciate it more than anything, serving their nations, but also doing a really nice job out on the pitch. Shelby, it's a gorgeous night here in Spokane. The United States, they're trying to hang on for the final 20-plus minutes of this match. You know what, the sun's starting to go down, so now the sun isn't a problem. It's just going to be that straight match between the two teams. And you know what, with the U.S. being up, I think Germany's going to come back even harder after this hydration break. Is there anything that you want to see Germany do here in the final 20-plus minutes? Is there anything you want to see them do on the attack to try and get that equalizer? We'll score, Alex. <laughs> I want to see them even it up. No, but I, I definitely think that they can make a little bit more aggressive runs, right? I feel like they've been a little bit more defensive in that aspect in the first half, but I think make, being a little bit more aggressive towards the offensive half will really get them there. And for the United States, of course, they'd like to put one into the back of the net. Boy, Katie Gernsbacher, maybe playing with a little anger, a chip on her shoulder that she didn't start last match after she scored two, and she gets that goal there for the U.S. after chipping one over the keeper in Michka. That is the difference. States in the 72nd minute. I'm going to read those out to you guys. I'm going to mark them on my sheet as well. Nikaya Comer is into the match. Coming out is Erica Jarmer. So that's a sub for a sub. So Jarmer, who came on for Colton, is now off. So Nikaya Comer is in. Then also. Six in for 18. So that's Lauren McGovern in to the match for Morgan Roberts. So McGovern in at the right wing spot. Slide there. Comer keeps it in. Here's one of the subs for the U.S. and one in the corner instead here on the near side. And then the final substitution. I'm a little bit surprised at this one, I think. Kaylee Utley is checking out of the match. She's coming out. Tori Allen's coming in. But maybe that's because... Corey Allen's uh, defender. She's a back, so maybe Derek Wayne thinking, hey, we're okay with a 2-1 victory here. Let's play five in the back, or at least a couple more holding midfielders. As that one was crossed into the box, it was punched out by Mishka, and now the counter could be on for Braunschweig in Germany. Good play over there on the far flank. Ball in the box. Robertson couldn't control it. A couple triangle passes there. Slowing the ball down a little bit, making some more educated passes. So a foul on Batoshek. As Karamanos, the captain, goes down, grabbing both of the legs. 
Angela Caramanos, captain in the Air Force, originally from San Jose, California. Gets a standing ovation after she gets up. Played for the Air Force Academy from 2014 to 2017. She had 14 career goals. One outside the top 10 all-time at the Air Force. Five career assists. And that is not good there. The player for Germany that is down. That's the left back and Yasmin Hamel. And immediately calling for the trainer was the head referee and Minji Cha. Like we've been saying this entire tournament, you never want to see a player holding their head like that. So Hamel being tended to. There's also going to be a German sub coming on here. You see it on your screen. That's 18 in for 17. So Jessica Schlegel is out. Schlegel is the reason that Germany has a goal, though. One of the big reasons. She forced the PK that Ludwig connected on. But Schlegel out, and the player coming in for Germany is number 18. Number 18 is Luisa Schmidtgen. So Schmidtgen, an officer in the Army for Germany, comes on. And you hope that Hamel's okay, still grabbing that head. I believe Hamel just came back on. Yeah, she's back on. Now the sun starts to set here in Spokane. Final 15 or so minutes. Robertson had some space. Good ball. How about that? Accuracy. McGovern forces the corner. Boy, Robertson might have had some space if she controlled it immediately there, Shelby, to make a run. And actually, it's not going to be a corner. That was last touch by McGovern. So it's going to be a goal kick here. But the through ball to McGovern, through two defenders. Just see the touch that Haley Robertson has. And to come back on, Hummel working that hard to get that ball and make sure that it's a goal kick right after coming up from an in a head injury. It's really, really great to see that she's doing well. It is good to see her back on the pitch. And also, too, you know that the United States were going to test her. Is McGovern on? She is. Good ball by Aaron Spear. Robertson's in the box. So is Comer. Now Gernsbacher gets there. McGovern working on three different German defenders. No one was there at the near post. And it is stopped by Mishka. Good header there from Aaron Spear. Robertson takes a tumble. No call. Besides that penalty, Minji Cha has pretty much let them play here tonight. I think here in the second half, too, we've been seeing a lot more of... Ooh. That was dangerous there, off of Braunschweig. Boy, I think Gillette, after she headered it, was thinking that the keeper, or uh, the header was by Allen... I think Gillette was thinking that Hedink was going to come get it. Hedink stayed inside the six, then came out. That could have been really dangerous. If Braunschweig could have deflected that right back to herself, it would have been knotted up at two. Absolutely. I couldn't even finish my thought. That scared me so much. Clock has struck 8.35. It's 5.35 in the morning in Germany. Auto people getting up on Saturday morning, hoping that Germany can find a way here to knot things up at two, to level up the United States at two. Remember, they didn't score until 45 plus. No call again. As you can see, things are getting a little bit physical, a little bit testy as these teams are trying to use these last few minutes here to get it in the back of the net and you see 
Germany is doing a very well job at keeping it kind of in the middle third here. And they're fighting against each other here for that little bit of pressure. Looks like that's Ludwig down for Germany. She's the one who connected on the PK. And actually, it's not Ludwig. Ludwig stood up there. Couldn't see her. I was looking for number seven. We're trying to see who that is down for Germany. This gives a chance for the United States to catch a breather and talk things over. And the player that was down was Hagedorn. So Hagedorn jumps right back up and sprints to the sideline. You know, she's going to want to check right back in. But what can Germany do here? This is about the time that the United States let up the goal and the deciding goal against Cameroon two days ago. It's hard to say. I think they have definitely stepped up their game offensively, right? I think that the U.S. had a little bit more possession in the first half, but the second half has been, I think, pretty even. I mean, we've had a lot of shots on goal from the U.S., but I think the German team has been a lot better at keeping it in the middle third, like I said before, but just making those connecting runs and those runs, period, up towards the offensive through the defensive line, and that's not, it's not easy to do through Gillette there in the middle. The story going into this match for the United States was revenge as a fan gets a souvenir. Caught that on the fly. It's a nice play. That guy could be a keeper. <laughs> Thrown in, off the head, and, and it's going to be a corner kick over there on the far side. The United States, they wanted revenge. Bad taste in their mouths with that match against Germany. Thought it should have ended in a draw in group stage. Instead, Germany struck in the 89th minute to win 1-0. The U.S. finds themselves up by one here. Final 10 plus minutes of this match. Gernsbacher, who scored that second goal, trying to set up a third. High into the Spokane sky, inside the 18. Left foot try by Reisinger is deflected, and Germany clears it away. So Yasmin Hamel checking out for Germany. Coming onto the pitch is Eileen Schultz. And we were both wondering at what point we would see Schultz check in. Schultz has had a monster tournament. She has been terrific. And OR4 in the Army. Schultz scored the second goal of the tournament in the 65th minute against Belgium. Also scored the third and final goal for Germany. And I said third and final goal, I should say. Fifth and final goal for Germany. Coming in as a sub against Ireland. No, it was the third and final goal. Can't read my own handwriting. Third and final goal against Ireland. So Schultz has two goals for this German team. McGovern, good control. Has Robertson instead going to try and test the keeper. And that was well off the mark. And I think Robertson wanted one at her feet in that situation I think so did Derek way into that situation Robertson was going to be on side and might have had a step as well speaking of Robertson here she is and I don't know if you saw that there but the captain Caramanos was telling her slow down you had a little bit of time yeah Caramanos was telling McGovern that she had some time there to control it and get it to Haley Robertson. About to be the 84th minute coming up. Germany needs to get going and get going quickly. Comer has some speed but closed out. Back heel, it did not deflect off Comer. It will be a throw-in for the U.S. That's another fun battle to watch. Tessa Glickner 
substitute who came in. Who boots it down the pitch there. Nice play by Glickner. She's been marking Comer ever since both subbed into the match. At what point does the United States start falling back and pushing the troops back and be content with a 2-1 outcome? A lot of managers and coaches would tell you, listen, the best defense is a hefty attack to keep the ball on your attacking third. That way Germany doesn't even have a chance to control the possession and maybe put one on frame. Tori Allen. Here's Gernsbacher. Turns and goes. Again, poked away by Ludwig. Skrade. Back to Glickner. Time running out for Germany. Germany has had trouble just getting it in their attacking half here the final 20 minutes or so of this half. The United States need to win if they want that chance to reach the gold medal match and then and then they really need some help from Germany. They need Germany or Belgium but they need Germany to defeat Cameroon and two German players crash into each other. That's Glickner and Mishka. And Mishka is able to get it inside the box. You can see now Germany starting to push that ball, at least on the attacking third. Even if they only have a couple players there, you never know. Maybe off a deflection, someone controls it. And a slide tackle. Turnsbacher, who's already playing with the yellow card here. She's still got to be careful. Ever since Glickner came in, she has made a difference. Absolutely, and she, she has to be careful because one more yellow card and she's out for the next game. And also out for this game. I mean, two yellows equal a red in the sport of soccer. See our upcoming matches tomorrow. France versus Mali. That French team is dangerous. And then so is South Korea. They take on the Netherlands at 7 p.m. Germany. Trying for that equalizer. Robertson. Germany has three back. Robertson just going to boot it down the pitch. And that's a veteran play. McGovern with great speed here. Absolutely. And a tackle. And that could result in something. Nope. In Ji Cha, not going to award the yellow card, but Germany plays it quickly. You can see Germany is gassed. They are running out on fumes here in the final three plus minutes. And we'll see how much time is added. The United States can do anything they can to just control possession. That's what they're trying to do here in the closing stages. Good communication there between the two defenders. Amazing that Gernsbacher was able to get the ball there. Had Robertson out wide. Instead, the captain, Karamanos, going to find Comer, who got back on side. Tori Allen now. A couple of substitutes, and Allen well, was last touched by Braunschweig. This is exactly what you want if you're the U.S. And now here they go to that corner flat. Karamanos, so smart. Braunschweig finally boots it away. It will be another throw in. That's an illegal throw and can't have that if you're the United States. We've seen that called multiple times in this championship tournament. Trying to make the match there with their offensive. That was a boot up high there. Could have been dangerous, but did not connect on Spear. 
Kernsbacher, perfect touch. Robertson, see if she wants to waste some time or if she wants to dance and dime inside the box. Right, left, back to right, but too high on the cross. I think she thought maybe she had Comer on the far flank on the back side of that play, but Comer also cut to the middle. So Comer and McGovern in that spot, Shelby, were right next to each other inside the 18. Absolutely. I think if Comer was a little bit farther outside, she may have been able to make a connection there on that pass and get it in the net. But I think maybe the excitement, right? It's almost the end of the game. And they're trying to crash that goal like we've been talking about. This is truly the outcome, though, that Cameroon wants as well. Because if Cameroon beats... Belgium and they beat Germany. Cameroon's going to go 4 0 and they're going to get their 12 points and go to the gold medal match. But the reason they want this is that if Germany were to go to nine points and then Germany, of course, beats Cameroon, it's over automatically. At least in a three way tie scenario, Cameroon with their goal differential, especially with what they did today against Ireland winning 12 0, could very well get into that gold medal match. And that's going to be it for Robertson. So a sub coming in for the United States. Actually, that's not going to be yet. Yeah, Robertson's coming out for the U.S. And we're waiting to see who checks in as Robertson gets a nice ovation. And I believe it's going to be Christina O'Sullivan, the bear checking in in the late stages and now we're waiting to see how much additional time there's going to be added on so it makes you think what is Derek Wayan thinking bringing O'Sullivan in in the last few minutes is that what they think can make the difference for the U.S. team to score a couple more goals and like you were talking about goal differential right so although they may want to conserve this score the u.s has also wanted to get a couple more goals to help them in that way germany going the wrong direction here if they want to equalize this match five minutes have been added as you see on your screen so about roughly of course that's a rough estimate four minutes left for germany One thousand four hundred and twenty seven people announced here at Union Stadium in Spokane, hoping that the United States can hold on a match that really has been controlled by the US. Germany's lone goal came on a penalty by Jill Ludwig in additional time. Can the Germans strike twice in additional time? to stun this Spokane crowd. Caramanos boots one down. Comer, can she get there? Nope. And in the same way with, well. Gernsbacher slicing and dicing. Again, so smart going to that corner flag. Here's a good battle. This should get a big ovation. Still by the corner flag. Gernsbacher working on two German defenders here. Still has it by the corner flag. And forces a throw in. Boy, there's a pretty clear MVP of this match for me, Shelby. And it's Katie Gernsbacher. She's been really putting in work there in the middle of the field. And really all over the field for the U.S. today. And again, now McGovern by the corner flag. Germany can't get possession of the ball. Now it's Karamanos' turn. They're just giving everyone on Team USA a turn over there. And it's going to be a corner kick here for the United States. So about two minutes left. 90 plus three is what we're at right now. United States trying to get to 90 plus 5. They play it short again. Smart not to give Germany a chance. And boy, Germany just cannot control it here, Shelby. And now another illegal throw-in, though. That's something that can't happen. 
Derek weigh in. Can't believe that that was the second time a player for the United States got called for an illegal throw in. I know what they're going to be practicing tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is going to be the last effort here as Mishka boots it down the pitch. And I also feel, too, that Germany doesn't have enough players on their attacking half right now. It's only four for Germany. I understand that they are gassed, but got to give everything here for the final minute. Absolutely. There's enough time to make things happen here for Germany if they gave it their all. This is about when they scored on that penalty kick in the first half. About the final minute in added time. This is where you want to be if you're Germany. At least the ball here on your attacking third. Never know. Ludwig, she's the one who scored. Can she score a second time? Batoshek, she has been locked down by this United States defense. And Spear plays it off of Braunschweig. We have about 30 seconds here. United States oh so close. Another throw in. This could be about it here. As you see, head referee from South Korea, Minji Cha, check the watch. United States can feel it here. And there is the final whistle. A big, big win for the United States. It was a second half goal for Katie Gernsbacher out of Austin, Texas. Chipped one over the keeper and Mishka to herself and then finished after the chip into the back of the net. Shelby, the United States at the pep rally were all asked about revenge. They were asked about who they wanted to play and they penciled in this matchup. They said, if we want to make the gold medal match, we must get revenge on Germany for what Germany did in 2019, winning in the final seconds of that match. The United States come away with a big victory. And they did it. They got that revenge, and with grace, they did an absolute phenomenal job. This was a great game to see between Germany and the U.S. It was an absolute great matchup between the two teams. And you know what? There's still respect. Look at them clapping hands. They're smiling. They're hugging. And they're just having a great time. And I, I can't say that they won't be hanging out after this, even though it didn't turn out the way Germany wanted it to be. I mean, do you see how much this means to these women? You see Mishka, the keeper who was inside the six over there, head down. I mean, this matchup means a lot. These are two of the four teams, along with Canada and the Netherlands, who first started this back in 2002. The United States, of course, looking for their first gold medal since those 2002 games. And then in 2012 is when Germany won last. It's been 20 years for the U.S., 10 years for Germany. And Germany knew they were all so close after winning those first two matches. They got the six points they needed against Belgium and Ireland. But the United States, they do get that revenge and win 2-1. Well, you heard it from the coaches before the match. They said, the German coaches said, we had two people we needed to beat to get to the game we wanted, and they beat those two people, and they said this is where the tournament starts for them. And this is how it started, with a loss against the U.S., and the fans went wild on that score. And look at them celebrating here with the team as they're excited for their win, 2-1 to one, Germany here in the last game of today. See the United States here. This is a great shot on your screen, celebrating with the home faithful here. It's such a great scene. It means so much to these women. They talked about it at the pep rally. A lot of them talked about it at opening ceremonies. But this is where they want to be. There's no place they'd rather be than here. They win two to one. So we'll see if we have an updated standings here and updated rankings, but I can talk to them. We can speak to them. We know now that there's a three-way tie between Germany, the United States, and Cameroon. All three nations have six points in Group A. There's a but, though, Shelby. Cameroon has only played two matches. And Cameroon also has that really high score that'll help them with the goal differential if it's needed. 
Yeah, Cameroon is plus 13, and you, you take a look there. The United States are plus 11. Germany is plus 7 through three matches, but Cameroon plus 13. That's through two matches. So Cameroon is the team to watch here in two matches. So Cameroon is the team to watch here in Group A. And then you see Ireland and Belgium round out Group A. And of course, Group B action again tomorrow. South Korea leads that group right now, but we'll see France again. So France versus Mali at 3.30 p.m. Pacific time. And then the Netherlands and South Korea at 7 p.m. Pacific. Final thoughts? I think this is a great game, and I want to see the highlights here. Just recapping the great scores and the great plays that we had from both teams here. Take a look at these highlights. We talked about this matchup. Everyone penciled it in. That's why you got the 1,400-plus people here in Spokane. Kaylee Utley got the scoring started in the 11th minute for the United States. She was set up by Robertson. You see it right there. Morgan Roberts worked really hard for the U U.S. Germany connected on a PK, on a penalty, 45-plus in the first half. They got that goal from Ludwig after Schlegel hit the deck. But then in the second half, Katie Gernsbacher, who didn't start last match, got the start again tonight. She was the difference. Chipped one over the keeper, put it into the back of the box. Well, it's been another terrific night. We will see you tomorrow for Mali and France. We say so long here from Spokane, where the United States beat Germany 2-1.